Hi, it's Dwyer, gamblersadvisory.com, a free site, bettingangle.us, a free site. I'm at the Tahiti Village in Vegas a few days before the Canelo Caleb Plant fight. I'm actually here for a wedding. I'm going to be leaving tomorrow. But let's just say it's interesting because even in Vegas, as I talk with people, many of them have no idea who Caleb Plant is, right? They see the fight as Canelo against the next guy. They have no idea. I think Caleb Plant is a live underdog. So I came across a recent article on the zone where, of course, boxing luminaries are talking about whether or not Caleb Plant has a chance to win the fight. Now, let me just say, one of the reasons why there's an opening here on YouTube for boxing fans like you and me to give our opinions is because in the sport of boxing, the insiders, right, guys with punches, have an open disdain for those who fight with a different fight style, right? The guys with punches can't imagine, can't imagine what it's like for an opponent who doesn't rely solely on power, right? So in the article on The Zone, and I thought it was interesting, you have two punchers sitting down and talking. Now I've talked positively of both of them in the past. Right, David Benavides is an excellent fighter. He's unbeaten. I believe he'd have a chance against Canelo. I believe that's a firefight. And of course, the person he's talking with is another heavy-handed guy, great heavyweight champion, defined the heavyweight division in the later part of the 1980s, Mike Tyson. So of course, here they are talking about a fight involving Canelo. Now, Canelo is one of the hardest punchers in boxing. Canelo has won titles in multiple weight classes, right? Canelo is on a historical run. We know Canelo. Canelo is a great fighter. The list of the people who he's beaten is a very impressive one. We won't repeat that here. But understand the guy he's fighting, Caleb Plant, has his own spectacular left hook. Folks, this is not a lion chasing down a deer, right? Caleb Plant has an explosive left hook. Look at the Mike Lee fight, right? Not only that, there's a precedent for this fight. I've mentioned it many times here online. The Kovalev, Canelo fight, I have to mention Buddy McGirt because that's one of the best jobs a trainer has done over the last 10 years, right? McGurk gets together with his fighter and they decide to move. And of course, look at the scorecards on that fight. Canelo wins by stoppage, but look at the scorecards on that fight. Understand too that Canelo, as hard as he hits, has some of the same problems that Sonny Liston had, right? Liston, hard puncher. But you notice Liston's foot speed just wasn't there to corner Ali, right? You notice that Liston, you know, was trudging along, slow foot speed. And I'm not saying Canelo has slow sp foot speed, but it's not Caleb Plant foot speed, right? If you're a heavy puncher and you're trying to catch up with the mover, you could be thoroughly outboxed. Right? Understand, Liston loses his title sitting on his stool. He doesn't want to continue. He understands the second half of the fight's going to be a problem for him. And of course, Canelo, like Liston, has stamina problems. Right? Liston tires against Leotis Martin. Right? Canelo against Kovalev. And keep in mind, Kovalev's not a mover. Against Kovalev. Canelo had to take a round off in the second half of that fight. So, of course, here's David Benavides. Now, again, this is a puncher, right? Life is different for punchers. They show up, hit you a few times, you fall down, the ref counts to 10. 
right? The thought process is very different for movers, right? Movers actually know what the other guy is doing, right? A mover is prepared to go 12. He spent his entire life, his career building up stamina. A mover understands that he has to turn you. He can't let a pocket set up. A mover understands where they are in the ring because they need room to move. They don't want to be up on the ropes pinned. So here's David Benavides talking about an unbeaten champion who has some of the best legs in all of boxing. Here's Benavides. He says the type of people that could actually that's the word, actually, give Canelo problems are the ones that got power and the ones that will actually sit there and fight. Not the ones that are going to run around and make it to the 12th round. You have to actually sit there and fight and you have to go through hell. Right now, the Benavides interview with Mike Tyson is give and take. Right? So as the zone then lays out in their article, and I'm going to quote the zone, then I'm going to quote Mike Tyson. Here's the zone's commentary. Tyson seems skeptical about whether Plant has it in him to do just that. Here's Tyson's quote. I think Caleb is going to panic of a heart attack when he gets in and doing that fancy stuff. Then they have in parentheses, referring to movement. Right? That's what Tyson considers the fancy stuff, movement. Right? Tyson says, let me read the whole quote. I think Caleb is going to panic of a heart attack when he gets in and doing that fancy stuff. And the guy keeps coming. Right, folks? Guys who move can walk you into a jab. Understand, too. There's going to be a dynamic in the fight. The more Canelo moves, the more tired he's going to be. Right? Isn't that how you beat sluggers like this? Right? Canelo is moving. He's busy. Busier than he wants to be. Isn't this a guy who had to take portions of rounds off against El Perro? Alfredo Angulo? Haven't you seen Canelo fights where it's clear that Canelo is resting during the fight? Right, folks? El Perro doesn't move remotely as well as Caleb Plant. Also, in terms of Caleb Plant, <clears throat> who, by the way, has a better than 50% KO percentage, you know, not having power. I mean, the assumption with these two sluggers, Benavides and Tyson, is that Caleb Plant is not going to be trying to hurt Canelo. Right, folks? You've, you've got to be kidding. Mike Lee doesn't make it out of the first third of the fight. Canelo has an explosive left hook. Excuse me. Canelo does, but so does Caleb Plant, right? Caleb Plant stops Mike Lee early. So, of course, the article in the zone continues. Benavides, after Tyson talks about how he believes Caleb, a professional prize fighter, is going to panic of a heart attack. Right? Benavides responds by saying, Caleb Plan is not going to be able to keep him off of him. You need power. You think a person with 12 knockouts in 21 fights is going to keep Canelo off of him? It's not going to happen. Folks, Canelo, a puncher, is in big trouble if he has this mindset. Right? First off, he's going to have to go looking for Khaled Plant. You understand that. 
If he decides to have Plant come to him, Plant's just going to step in, throw a few drafts, keep moving. Plant's going to win every such round. So Canelo is going to have to cut off the ring on Plant. And just understand, a good mover has a distinct advantage with the judges. Because you see the other guy looking slow, looking methodical. Right? When you're watching Ali Liston, I know it's an old fight, but it's an iconic fight. When you're watching Ali Liston, the first fight, and you see Liston trying to catch up to Ali, right? Big puncher. Wins the title by stopping Floyd Patterson in the first round. Then stops Floyd Patterson in the first round of the rematch. When you see Liston trying to catch up to Ali, and Ali's flicking jabs, and Ali is moving around the ring, aren't you thinking to yourself, wow, Liston's in trouble? Aren't you thinking, you know, Sonny's not looking too good here? Right? The expectations for this fight, especially with Tyson and Benavides, are too high for Canelo. Who's going to have the easier time exceeding expectations? If Caleb Plant comes out and he's moving his feet, and folks, I'm telling you, he's visually arresting. In other words, you see him against Uskadege, and Khaled Plan understands how to frame his movement. So Uskadege is coming toward him. Khaled Plan pretends to be throwing punches when he's not. Then he comes in and lands shots on Uskadege. He looks like a matador dealing with a bull. Folks, that's his game. So in the comment section of this video, tell us the Canelo fight where Canelo has hunted down an opponent, right? The recent Canelo fight where Canelo was dealing with the mover. That's not Rocky Fielding. That's not that fight. That's not the Callum Smith fight, right? I'll agree. He catches up with Kovalev. But you and I know Kovalev was fighting out of his style, right? That's the only fight I've ever seen Kovalev move like that in, right? Understand, matchmaking is a big part of boxing. Some of the matchmakers in history are legendary. Look at Canelo's resume, Danny Jacobs. Wasn't on his back foot, moving extensively, right? Jacobs' big deal was to switch to southpaw and to try to stay in the pocket, right? This is 168. Tell us the mover Canelo has faced here. I can tell you that in Canelo's career, one of the closest scorecards before the stoppage was the Kovalev scorecard. And of course, Kovalev in his mid-30s. And of course, Kovalev arguably is more tired than Canelo in that fight. Folks, what happens when a guy closer to his prime, Caleb Plant, is still standing and we're headed into the second half of the fight? What happens if Canelo starts tiring and Caleb Plant decides to step on the gas? Right, folks, there's a phrase in boxing. We've lost track of it because we're in a big clunky heavyweight era called a boxer puncher. Right, think Shane Mosley when he was at lightweight. Right, think Ray Robinson. For all the slick boxing, these highlights show Ray Robinson doing, he's a knockout puncher. Right, folks, I'm just telling you that if Canelo tries to run down, because that's what he's going to have to do. This is not Avni Yildurum. 
if Canelo tries to run down Caleb Plant, he's going to be tiring himself. If he doesn't catch Plant early, are you sure he's going to have the stamina to do the whole fight? I'm not. Caleb Plant is accustomed to trying to win rounds. Now, I know judges love Canelo like they love Anthony Joshua. But sooner or later, you run into a fight where even friendly judges can't give you the match. Isn't that what happened to Joshua Usyk? Right? I get the feeling, looking at when the scores were announced in that fight, that Joshua, who had to know, especially after the last 30 seconds of that 12th round when he's getting cuffed around, he had to know that he was at severe risk of losing on the scorecards. And even after they announced the wide scores, I get the feeling Joshua thought, hey, maybe I've won this because he's accustomed to being a not just fan favorite, but a judge favorite. Is it possible here that panic sets in? Let's remember, the Billy Joe Saunders fight is close, and I thought Saunders' strategy was questionable. Right? Is panic going to set in with Tyson and David Benavides? Right? The sluggers, the slugging section of boxing. If Canelo gets to the seventh round against Caleb Plant, and Caleb Plant looks cool, calm, and collected. Caleb Plant doesn't have a mark on his face. Folks, this matters to movers. You remember Ali after beating Liston? He says, look at me. I'm as pretty as a girl. If Caleb Plant is unmarked, and you're starting the seventh round, and you're thinking to yourself, wow, Canelo has been unable to corner this man, right? You're thinking to yourself, wow, Canelo got caught with some left hooks. I'll agree. Even I feel there's something wrong with Caleb Plant's right hand. Even I feel that. But understand, Plant is so good. He could live off that left hook, right? Just like Deontay Wilder has been living off that straight right hand. Right? And I'm just telling you, and I know Plant physically is bigger, right? Let's remember Ali something like 6'3". In the ring, the movement gap is going to be substantial. Now, if Canelo decides to channel his inner marvelous Marvin Hagler, right? You remember that Hagler-Hearns fight? And if Canelo comes across the ring and says, hey, you know, I'm going to send us home early here. I'm always going to be on my front foot and I'm going to be throwing power the whole match. Folks, what happens? What happens if Canelo makes a courageous push in the first three rounds and Caleb Plant is still untouched? Tell me the Caleb Plant fight where he gets badly hit in the body and you see him wincing. Folks, I don't know of that fight. Right? Plant is a skilled mover. Boxing has major diversity. This is a clash of two different styles. Right? If this fight goes the distance, and if no one gets knocked down, and I know that's an outcome Tyson and Benavides haven't even considered, right? You know, for them, it's, hey, come on. Canelo's a hunter. Canelo's a puncher. Right? It's as if Tyson has completely forgotten that Buster Douglas put a jab in his face kept him on the outside, had an uppercut hidden behind the jab and stopped him, had him on the canvas looking for his mouthpiece 
unable to beat the count. Right? Folks, movers can win in boxing. Some of the best punchers in the sport, Ray Robinson, combined it with movement. Right? Jaron Ennis destroyed Thomas DeLorme. Right? Ennis is one of the best up-and-coming fighters in the sport. Right? Eventually, I have no doubt, we're going to see Ennis against Virgil Ortiz, another one of the great up-and-coming fighters in the sport. Right? Ennis stops guys. He just stopped the guy in the first round. A reporter asked Ennis, and I'll try to get that video in my favorites folder here online, about this Canelo, Caleb Plant fight. Right? Ennis said, hey, people are sleeping on Caleb Plant. Right? Because, of course, Ennis is a boxer puncher. Right? He's not Mike Tyson. He's not David Benavides. They understand there's more to the sport than just, you know, put it this way. Ennis understands that the sport's not about just running up and destroying a guy. Right? Life's more complicated than that. Isn't it? Right? So, you know, I thought this fight was really damn close to a 50-50 fight. I don't know what else you need. Canelo's had a great career. But I don't know how you could see the problems Canelo had with movement from Kovalev and then reach the conclusion that he's going to solve those problems for this fight. The Billy Joe Saunders fight was intriguing because Saunders, who at times is a fast starter, right? He has Chris Eubank completely outclassed after the first few rounds. Saunders was lingering a bit too close to the pocket. You kind of sense that. Saunders is leaning over the pocket so much that the punch that wrecks his eye is an uppercut, isn't it? And in that fight, with Saunders giving away his legs, why would you ever do that against Canelo? With Saunders giving away his legs, I thought Saunders, well, let's just say that fight was close. Again, until the stoppage. Right? So hasn't Canelo narrowly escaped in some fights. I understand that when they go to the scorecards after the fight, somehow Canelo's winning on every scorecard, right? I understand for people who haven't seen the fight, who just read the post-fight, they hear Canelo wins by stoppage, then they see the scorecards, and Canelo's ahead on the scorecards, and folks then dismiss the fight, right? They say, oh, well, Looks like Canelo didn't have a lot of trouble here. Don't you know differently? Right? Weren't you watching that Kovalev fight and weren't you thinking to yourself, man, Kovalev's lingering around? Wasn't there a time in that fight where you thought, man, I hope old Kovalev shows up here? Right? Here's Canelo taking off the round. Here's Kovalev, guy with a wicked punch, a guy who destroyed Nathan Cleverly. Why doesn't Kovalev here just say, hey, forget the moving. <laughs> this guy's tired. I'm a puncher. I have a great jab. Right? Didn't you watch Danny Jacobs fight? Now, Canelo, great head movement. Hard to hit Canelo. Understand, all a mover has to do is make you miss and touch you. And you understand the mover is the one dictating the pace. The mover is the one thwarting his opponent. So forgive me here. I believe this is a highly competitive fight. If you would have told me that Canelo was a minus 150 favorite, I would say, all right, okay, I could see that. But come on now, the line's out of control. You're going to give me better than five to one odds on Caleb Plant? Sign me up. Let me just say, too, 
This idea that plant can't handle constant pressure. Has anyone seen Jose Uzcategui fight? He's always coming after you, isn't he? He's always coming after you. Do you believe that Canelo moves better than Uzcategui? I don't. Folks, it's by beating Uzcategui that plant got his belt. Understand, too. You could Google Caleb Plant sparred with Errol Spence, and you'll find out that Caleb Plant has been in the ring with Errol Spence. Folks, they're both PBC guys. Right? Errol Spence, when he's on his front foot, is a terror. Look at the Chris Algieri fight. You don't think that Caleb Plant privately hasn't dealt with guys whose game is to apply pressure. I saw the Rocky Fielding fight. Canelo dominated. But understand, that's the pace Canelo likes. The Rocky Fielding fight, isn't that the Callum Smith fight? Isn't that the Avni Yildurum fight? Right? Canelo likes to go at a certain pace. Doesn't he? Folks, he won't be able to operate at that pace in this fight. I was surprised that he beat Billy Joe Saunders. I'll be surprised if he's able to quickly handle Caleb Plant. I'm expecting this fight to get into the second half of the fight and for the announcers to start expressing concern over Canelo's inability to reach this guy. Right now, I know that's not the way Mike Tyson thinks. I know that's not the way David Benavides thinks. I know, just walking around Vegas here, that, you know, a lot of people don't know who Caleb Plant is. Folks, he's unbeaten. You heard Benavides say, you think a person with 12 knockouts in 21 fights is going to keep Canelo off of him. Let's do the math. 12 knockouts, 12 times 2 is 24. So if Caleb Plant had 24 fights and had 12 knockouts, that would be a 50%, a 50% KO percentage. Folks, this is a guy with enough power to have an above 50% KO percentage. Okay. Right? Hey, hon. Okay, my, my video has just been crashed. <laughs> Let me sign off here. I like Caleb Plant at these odds. I'll hedge the play with Canelo by stoppage. Understand the risk involved. Right? If this fight goes the distance and Canelo wins by decision, and I consider Canelo to be a judge favorite. You lose it all. But I can't turn my back on a greater than plus 500 underdog in a fight this competitive, especially after seeing the Canelo Kovalev fight. If there's one fight to watch in thinking about fight styles here, make it the Kovalev Canelo fight, right? I think that's going to show you that movement bothers. Canelo, right? Also, let's look at some of the ages of the fighters he's fought, right? Folks, Billy Joe Saunders in his 30s, Kovalev in his 30s, right? Tell me in the comment section of this video, the last guy, the last guy Canelo fought who was, let's say, 26 or younger. I look forward to your response. Thanks for stopping by.